Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands, and this, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. Today, we're gonna be talking about music and pacing your edits to music and how music gets incorporated with the project that you're working on. I've actually been surprised at how many people will tell me that they will edit an entire piece and then do music last. And to me, that doesn't really make a lot of sense because music is supposed to be a way to like infuse emotion into your edits and into your videos. And if you're doing that last, then how does it match up or you're taking way too much time to find music or if you find it early on, you can set the vibe of the video early. I, I don't I don't understand. For me personally, I find music very early on in the process and some people are gonna have different opinions and they do their own thing, that's totally cool, but hear me out. I come from a very musical background. I played a lot of instruments growing up. I was in a lot of bands, I DJ, I do all this stuff with music. So to me, music is a way to convey emotion and a way to set a tone for anything, whether you're just casually listening or you're editing a video. So why I find music early on is because I want all of my footage and the way that I edit to be dictated by the music itself. If you have a slower, more emotional song, your edit is gonna be a little bit slower and more emotional. Whereas if you have a very fast paced, high energy song, your edit is gonna be completely different than the slow song. So the people that edit first and then find music afterwards, I don't really understand how that works because you get attached to a vibe in the way that the thing is edited and then you have to find music that matches is where for me, if you match the edit to the song, the emotion is gonna get infused into it a lot earlier on in the process, and you'll end up getting done and feel better about it closer to a, I, I still, I, I don't understand why people do it the other way. I guess the best way to explain it is just to show you examples. All right guys, down on my timeline, I've got three different examples of kind of what I'm talking about here, but this first example is just some footage laid down over a music track with no real editing going on at all. So check it out. Okay, yes, the clips were cutting where you should cut in relation to the beats of the music, but like to me, that's just very stale and boring where there's a lot of like little intricate drum things happening in that music track. So why not lean into that and why not edit based on the like fundamental parts of the song? So to me, those little drum things are really cool. So the next example I'm gonna show you is a very extreme version of following the beats of the music and editing to the music to create a vibe, but check it out. Again, yes, I know a little extreme with all the little cuts and everything, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to accentuate those little drum accents in the song with the footage that I'm using. And I'm creating a vibe based on the music and I'm not creating a vibe and then finding music later, which yeah, you can like retime some stuff if you find music later in the process. But for me, as I'm working from left to right and I'm finishing a project, I want it to all have a vibe and I want it to vibe with the emotional attachment that I have to the music, which then hopefully will come through in the edit. So here's another example example, same footage, different track. Check it out. Feels completely different than the first one I showed you because the music itself is different. So there's a lot of those little horn stabs that are going like And so to me as an editor, I wanna accent those. I wanna accent the rhythm of the song with the footage that I have and I'm going to edit it in a completely different way than I did the first version because the song is different. So again, if you guys are finding footage, you're going through, you're editing, you're putting it on a timeline and then you're finding music afterwards, you're actually doing yourself a disservice because you have to go back and start retiming things and like re manipulating all the stuff that you did, which is going to change the original vibe you were going for. Whereas if you were just to work from left to right with the song that you have early on, you're gonna dictate and set the vibe very early on and it's gonna all feel the same as you continue working through the project. Here's the third example, which is like a very old timey kind of lo-fi hip hop song. So to me, I'm gonna do something completely different with the edit based on the music, check it out. So 
So that one, a lot slower paced. I'm doing like a VHS effect over the top of the footage because it's a lo-fi hip hop track. To me, that just kind of signifies like vinyl, like dust scratches and just kind of like old timey feel. So I went with the old timey VHS look. And in the edit, I'm actually playing a clip forward. And then on the snare, I'm reversing that clip. So it plays forward and then goes backwards. And on the snares, I'm also accenting with a different VHS effect. Let's check it out on the timeline. So basically what I have here is this adjustment layer that's doing my master VHS effect over all of the footage. And then on all of the snares, I'm actually doing a different VHS effect. And guys, I'm using Red Giant Universe. I've mentioned this several times in the past, but Red Giant Universe is amazing. So I'm using Universe VHS and I can just open up my preset browser and I have a bunch of different effects that I can choose from kind of in that similar vein. And I can also just come in here and play around with all the parameters individually if I'd like. But on all of the snares in the song, I'm doing a different VHS effect with like a big black line across the top. And then the rest of it is just normal. And on the snare with that other VHS effect, I'm actually just taking the footage and I'm reversing it. So if I just play this without the effect, you can see the bird here. Check out the bird, right? And then coupled with the VHS effect and that little effect on the snare. Same thing there. And as I'm listening to that music while I'm editing, I'm actually like doing this weird, like rhythmic lean forwards and backwards, which is what gave me the idea to do footage forwards and then reverse and then coupled with the VHS effect, I'm going to edit this one. If I have that music, if that's the vibe I'm going for, completely different than the second one I showed you and completely different than the first one I showed you. And the reason why I'm explaining this to you is because I don't want you guys to get attached to an idea early on in your process and then feel differently about it at the end because you couldn't find the right music or you're taking hours and hours and hours to find the right vibe and you can't find it. That happens all the time. Trust me, it happens with the people I work with. It's happened to me plenty of times where you get stuck and then you can't figure out an exit strategy and then you end up feeling unhappier at the end of the project than you would have if you just would have followed a different step in the beginning. So for me, my process, when I get footage, I definitely look through all of it so I can see what I'm working with. And then the second thing I do is find music because I want to build a vibe based on all the footage that I saw. I already know what I have. So now I'm going to start building a musical vibe. And then that way, when I edit, which is step three, I'm going to go into that edit already knowing the kind of emotion that I want to pull out of the footage because I already have the music and then my edit is going to be 100% dictated by the music and the emotional attachment I have and what it's making me feel and the rhythm that's associated with it, right? You would never hypercut super fast edits to a slow song or vice versa. You want to build your vibe around the music that you have first for me. If you're one of those people that likes to find music last, try it in reverse. Try finding it first and see what that does to your creative process and see if you actually like the end result better than the way that you did it before. If we pop back over to that second example, I know some people will ask me here. All I'm doing here is I'm just using crops on all this footage. So I'm coming in here and I'm just cropping here, cropping here, cropping here, and then finishing the crop here. Same with all of these lines here. I'm just cropping from the bottom up towards the top to create kind of a layered effect going up and down and across the screen. And for the first example, all I'm doing is playing with the scale and the position on all of these frames. That's all I'm doing. I'm just scaling in and moving the position around so I can just accent different parts of the frame in conjunction with those little rhythmic drum things. So let's watch all three of them before we finish up. Same footage, three very different vibes, and it's because I was feeling a different emotional attachment to each song at the beginning, which dictated my edit, which dictated what I did with the footage, which dictated pretty much every part of the creative process. And then when I get to the end of the video, I'm gonna go, cool, this fits automatically, and I'm not wasting time going in and wasting hours and hours trying to find music, and then I'm not unhappy with it at the end because I knew early on what I was getting myself into. As you guys know, all the videos on this channel and all the things that I say to you on a semi-regular basis are all my 
own opinion, and this is kind of things that I've learned along the way and things that have helped me in my creative journey as a professional video editor and the pitfalls and the kind of complications that I've run into early on and how I've been able to fix them moving forward in my career. And that's all this channel is. I wanna share those things with you guys so that you don't run into similar problems or you look at a problem in a kind of a different way because of a recommendation from me. Also, complete side note, learn how to edit stuff merch coming soon. Did you think this was a Run DMC shirt? No, it's a render shirt. What I'm doing is I'm creating a merch line that is post-production specific. It's not necessarily learn how to edit stuff specific. It will say learn how to edit stuff on the back, but all of my designs will be focused around post-production in a, you know, more general way. I don't know, I'm really excited. I ordered proofs. They're all starting to come in the mail now. I'm checking the quality, making sure that it's good to sell. I'm finalizing my designs, and then you guys will be able to buy some merch. Huzzah! That about does it today for me, guys. I hope that you will go and you will jump into your edit and think about music in a different way than you did before you watched this video. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly. I learn how to edit stuff. Follow me on social at Naughty and Sands. If you have any questions, you want me to do a specific tutorial, let me know. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I'll see you next time.